So like I said, this is chapter 5, section 4. And in this section, really short, we're talking about power, but it does add on another equation for us. Uh, power equals work divided by time. What is... It doesn't give it here, but what is the uh, unit that goes with work? Joules. Joules. Mm -hmm. And well, what does Newton go with? Uh, force. It's a force. Okay. Mm -hmm. So work is going to be in joules. And then if you've got time, what is time going to be in? Second. Time is going to be in seconds. So you've got joules per second. Um, if we look at the bottom one, though, where it says power can also be equal to force times speed, what's the unit for force? Well, it's Newton, and then velocity or speed is meters per, per second. So joules is also equal to what? Joules is also equal to what unit? Set of units. Think about what you have here compared to what you have here at the bottom. No, don't think. I want just what you see on the screen. Joules can be broken into what set of units? Newton times meter. So the Newton times meter is also the same thing as the joule, and then you've got the seconds there in the denominator. So two more equations for you. Make sure you write those down because we're going to get to some more problems. of the work done or the energy transformed per unit time. Power is the rate at which work is done or energy is expended. It is measured in joules per second, which are known as watts. So add that. Joules per second is also known as what? Watts. So watts is going to be the unit for... What? Watts is going to be the unit for... Power. Power. Watts is the unit for power. So you can write that, write that down. So power is measured in watts. Now that's a capital W which goes with watts. What else is a capital W? Work. Work. How can you tell the difference if you're working with watts or if you're working with work? Well, tell you work is it doesn't have to tell you. Well, see, work is which one appears after a number? One's a quantity. W that goes with work is a quantity. Whereas W that stands for watts is a unit. Which one would go after a number? Watts. 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 So if you saw 100 with a capital W behind it, that is automatically referring to watts. Watts. Okay? Right. Right. If it said 100 with a J behind it, then that's going to be some type of work. Okay, but if you see a capital W, you need to know, well, am I working with watts or with work? And if it's behind a number, it's the unit. Work this out. Make sure you write down all the given information because then I'm going to take it off the screen and go work it out myself. Or I can just work it here at the top. Make sure you pay attention to units. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you find your final answer to compare it, it's going to need to be in kilowatts. Yes.
It doesn't matter which of these that you decide to go through. Start plugging in your numbers. It's going to be the same. So mass is 193. Do we need to leave that as kilograms? Yes. Um, let's see here. Gravity, 9.81. Distance. What is distance? The 7.5 meters. So I labeled it as height originally, but I mean, a height is a distance, so 7.5. And then divide all of, that, all of that by the time, which is 5 seconds. And what is your answer? 2839 watts, right? 2839 watts. So that's in watts. Everything that's given is in kilowatts. Yeah, so what is that going to be in kilowatts? That is 2.8 kilowatts. So which of those works the best? So 2.5 kilowatts. Okay. You got to go, if you want your curtain to do that, you have to go with a motor that is going to be slightly more powerful than what you need. Okay. There's no sense in overdoing it. The more horsepower um, or the more kilowatts of power, whatever the power rating is, the higher the power rating, the more expensive the motor. So... Go with what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on this one, we're working out number two. Get everything written down and what you need to find so that I can move to another slide. No. We'll be going for a while. <laughs> hey, um, let me get you started with this. So if we're looking for power, you probably thought, okay, work over time or force times velocity, right? I see some velocity, so I'm going with force times velocity. Now, a force is given, and it says that's the force due to the resistance, which means there is probably another force also, right? So if you take into account the force due to resistance, then you've also got to have what? Force applied or, you know, whatever is being applied to the car. So I'm going to put force of the car. So that net force is actually what goes right here. Um, as far as velocity goes, and I want you to keep this in mind, they do give you that it starts off at rest and it accelerates to a speed of 18 meters per second. Does it immediately reach 18 meters per second? No, it does not. So you can't put the 18 meters per second in for your V at that point. So velocity is going to be used somewhere else, the 18 meters per second. But that velocity there, you actually need to break apart into distance over time. So we will get to use our 12 seconds there, which means you've got to find distance. So if we're looking at this, you're going to have to do something to find the net force. And now you're going to have to do something to find distance. You figure out how do you find net force and how do you find distance. So that's two other separate calculations. Notice in force of the car, I put mass times acceleration. I didn't put mg, I actually put ma. Why not put the g at this point? Right. This is uh, something that is going horizontal to the ground, so it's not considered to be moving against gravity itself. So you're going to have to actually find the acceleration based on what you see here. So acceleration is going to be a separate calculation. What's the formula for acceleration? Acceleration is velocity over time. 
Acceleration is a velocity divided by time. Has anyone figured out how they're going to find distance? Uh, take the velocity, plug it into the equation, take time, and so on. What? What? I took the final velocity, 18. You can't. That's what I was telling you earlier is um, that velocity is eventually reached. It's not immediately reached. So you're going to have to find another equation to find your distance. <laughs> It's not something that occurs immediately. What'd you get? That's the final answer. How'd you find distance? Point five. Okay. Where'd you get that equation? To find delta x. Okay. So he said delta x equals one half. VF delta T. There was another one in all of those equations that we did. It was delta X equals one half A delta T squared. Notice either one of those equations translates either way. So it does not matter which one you use. All of these equations were the ones introduced back in chapter two. Delta X is your distance. That is a distance, so plug in one half. Acceleration, uh, we had already calculated that as 1.5. Again, you could use the one that Patrick gave us originally. And then 12 squared. And delta X ends up being 108 meters. So you'll plug that in right here, 108. And Patrick, what would you say the final answer was? 23,851 watts. 23,851 watts. So there's the final answer, 23,850 watts.